Hi everyone, welcome back once again to my educational channel on biology. I'm teacher Janet and today we'll be discussing photosynthesis. It's a form 5 topic and the subtopic is 2.4. Now many students have requested this topic because they find it hard to understand the process of photosynthesis. All right, the two stages of photosynthesis. But do not worry as I have already prepared a very good video for you here and do check it out because I've also designed an easy to understand new concept map or schematic diagram that shows the whole process of photosynthesis that you need to learn at Form 5 level. All right? So there will also be an animation uh, of this uh, process. Okay, so let's get started straight away. The learning standards for this lesson are as follows. 2.4.3 identify structures of a chloroplast, granum, thylakoid, and stroma. Number four, be able to relate light-dependent and light-independent reactions in photosynthesis. So these are the two stages of photosynthesis, light-dependent and light-independent reactions. Number five, be able to write a chemical equation to represent the process of photosynthesis, right? So, and lastly, compare and contrast the light-dependent and light-independent reactions in photosynthesis. Now, here is a HOTS question that may come out in the exam, in the school exam or in SPM, right? So, please take note of this. It's from the textbook, right? Explain why in autumn the green colour of tree leaves changes to yellow, orange, red and brown. Okay, so here, important thing to note it is in autumn, okay? So there are countries that have four seasons, right? Spring, summer, autumn, winter. So in spring and summer, the tree leaves are green in color, right? But slowly in autumn, they start to change. Huh? Change, the green color will gradually disappear. And then we get the yellow, orange, red or brown colored leaves. So what's the reason, right? So let's refer to the four seasons. Uh, now, in spring and summer, what is how is the light intensity and temperature? Yes, it's higher. There's higher light intensity and higher temperature, which may be at the optimum level for a tree, okay, to carry out photosynthesis. So, it in spring and summer, it will use the green chlorophyll pigments to absorb sunlight and carry out photosynthesis. So, the color of the leaves in spring and summer is green, uh, green. But coming to autumn, and then gradually into winter, the light intensity and temperature of the surroundings or in the environment will decrease as it's getting colder and darker, right? So a tree will gradually stop making food for that period of time, autumn and winter, especially winter, and then it will become dormant, meaning inactive in winter. It won't carry out any more photosynthesis as the environmental conditions like light intensity and temperature are not suitable for it. To carry out photosynthesis huh? it's too low huh? the temperature is too low okay and the light intensity is too low thus the trees do not need the green chlorophyll pigments okay for that period of time and they will break down the green chlorophyll pigments in their leaves so you will see that as the green chlorophyll pigments are broken down other colors will emerge okay the un underlying pigments are huh, in the leaves such as the red and orange pigments will become more visible all right so for example uh, uh, red leaves actually contain the anthocyanins the pigments red pigments are called anthocyanins for orange leaves the pigments that give the leaf the orange color are the carotenoids and uh, those yellow leaves have xanthophylls in them all right so remember at least one of these uh, you want to explain the change in color from green colored color leaves to yellow orange or red or brown color leaves right so one mark each for each point and take note of the keywords which are colored here so what is the definition for photosynthesis photosynthesis is a process by which organisms like green plants use light energy especially sunlight 
to synthesize complex organic compounds, which are the carbohydrates, the sugars, uh, glucose, starch, and so forth, from carbon dioxide, the gas carbon dioxide, and water. Okay, so carbon dioxide is uh, obtained from the air and water is from the soil. All right. Now, the green pigment chlorophyll in the chloroplast, the organelle called the chloroplast, traps the sunlight and then converts the light energy into chemical energy. Firstly, in the ATP molecules, okay, and then finally, the chemical energy is stored in the sugars that are formed, in the bonds inside the sugar molecules. Okay? So, oxygen is produced as a byproduct and is released into the atmosphere for cellular respiration of organisms. Okay, now for the learning standard number five, we have to know how to write a chemical equation to represent the process of photosynthesis. So this is the chemical equation for photosynthesis. It consists of the chemical formulae of the different compounds. All right, so 12H2O plus 6CO2 using light energy absorbed by chlorophyll produces C6H12O6, that's glucose plus 6O2 and 6H2O. So it must be a balanced equation on both sides. Huh? Have the same number of each type of atoms on both sides. Right, so uh, here we see that water is used and water is also produced. Okay, so the water is produced when photolysis of water occurs when the water molecule uh, is split or broken down to form hydrogen and hydroxide ions and after that hydroxide ions come hydroxide groups combine together to form oxygen and water. Okay, so oxygen is used and oxygen is also produced. But if you were to write an equation that is uh, the net equation, you know, okay, the final equation, it will be 12H2O minus 6H2O. Huh? There will be 6H2O here instead and no H2O on this side. Okay, anyway, this is from the textbook, so we are going to just stick to this chemical equation. If you are asked to write down the chemical equation for photosynthesis, please write this one, right? And then there's also a word equation, which consists of words only, no chemical formula. Huh? Sometimes you can be asked to write the word equation for photosynthesis or respiration. Huh? So remember, water plus carbon dioxide using light energy absorbed by chlorophyll produces glucose and oxygen. Right now, for the word equation, our memory aid, a bio key is W E C C arrow POGO. The PO here stands for photosynthesis. Uh, so actually, it's W E C C G O only. I add in the PO to remind you that this equation is for photosynthesis, not not respiration. Uh, for respiration, is go whack the opposite. Uh, this one is whack. So, as funny as it sounds, it helps us to remember the basic word equation for photosynthesis very quickly. Alright? So, W is for water. This E is for energy, and we have to write it here as light energy. And then, C is for carbon dioxide. The other C is for chlorophyll, which is written below the arrow. Okay? And then, uh, G is for glucose, and O is for oxygen. Huh? Now, pogo is like a, you know, can refer to the pogo stick that people children used to play and uh, they put their legs there and then they'll jump over the place. Huh? Okay, so um, remember this equation now, uh, WEC GO or WEC POGO for the equation for photosynthesis. One of the common exam questions that can be asked, right, is state three types of cells in the leaves that carry out photosynthesis. Now, what are the three types of cells that can carry out photosynthesis? So, these cells that can carry out photosynthesis are, are palisade mesophyll cells in the upper part of the leaf. Okay, these cells are tightly packed together and they contain a lot of chloroplasts to carry out photosynthesis. Then the spongy mesophyll cells, which have irregular shapes and are found below the palisade mesophyll cells. They also have a lot of air spaces for carbon dioxide 
to diffuse into the leaves, right? And into the cells for photosynthesis. And lastly, the gut cells. Okay, so this is the cross-section of the gut cells and this is from the top, when you view the gut cells from the top. They also have a lot of chloroplasts to carry out photosynthesis and this adaptation helps them to regulate the size of the stomatal pore or the stoma, right? We'll study more about the gut cells in another chapter. So remember these three cells that can carry out photosynthesis in the leaves. Now, another learning standard that we have to be able to carry out is to identify the structures of a chloroplast. That is the granum, or plural form is grana, the thylakoids, and the stroma. So what, where are all these structures and what is their purpose, right? What's the function? All right, first of all, thylakoids. Try and say this word, thylakoids. Thylakoids are like, these shape structures like coins like that, you know, like coins huh, that you stack up. And these this shape bags or sacks contain chlorophyll. So they are green in color and the chlorophyll is found on the surface membrane of the thylakoids, right? So chlorophyll is a photosynthetic pigment in the thylakoid, thylakoid membrane that traps sunlight, okay, to start the process of photosynthesis. More about that later. So the thylakoid is the site of the light-dependent reaction, LDR, which is the first stage of photosynthesis. Okay, it's the site of the light-dependent reaction. All right? Now here you see the thylakoids stacked up together, and also here we have the stack of thylakoids, all right? Where the light-dependent reaction or the first stage of photosynthesis occurs. Next, let's go on to granum. All right, try and say this word, granum. Now, granum is just a stack or a group of thylakoids. Think of the word group, G-R-O-U-P. Eh? So this word granum also have G-R, right? So granum is a group of thylakoids, a stack of this shaped thylakoids, all right? Now, what is the function of the granum? So when the thylakoids are stacked up, this arrangement increases the surface area of the thylakoids uh, without taking up so much space for optimal photosynthesis, okay, for faster photosynthesis, right? Because more thylakoids can be stacked up inside each uh, chloroplast, right? Now, next we have the liquid part, all right, which is the stroma. Not stoma. Stoma is the pore in the leaf, but this stroma is the fluid, the colorless fluid surrounding the granum or the thylakoids. And it is important too because it is the site or the location for the next stage of photosynthesis, which is the light independent reaction, LIR, uh, the light independent reaction that produces glucose. So glucose is produced in the stroma, right? And the fixation of carbon dioxide also occurs here, meaning the carbon dioxide will be uh, trapped and found, converted into a, a, a state where it's inside an organic compound in the stroma. So we'll more about that later, uh, about the fixation of carbon dioxide later. So we have to be able to draw this chloroplast then with the thylakoids and then the group of thylakoids called the granum. It's called granum. Apart from that, we may also see starch granules. All right. So starch is uh, the store of carbohydrates. Okay, in the chloroplast. After the glucose has been formed, it can be converted into starch for storage. And then we may also see lipid granules or lipid globules, also formed uh, from the glucose uh, that. Is formed at the beginning, at the uh, after photosynthesis occurs. Now another feature or characteristic here that you have to know is that chloroplast. The chloroplast has two membranes, the outer membrane and the inner membrane. So it has double membranes, but the inner membrane is not folded, as in the mitochondria. Uh, this inner membrane is smooth. All right, it's not folded. 
So here are the notes for the structure of a chloroplast, as we have discussed just now. So we've discussed number one, thylakoids, number two, granum, and number three, stroma. But there's one more here, lamellae. What are they? So lamellae are structures that separate the, that connect the granum. The grana from, uh, two grana, for example, here. Huh? Now, they increase the efficiency of photosynthesis by keeping the grana separated from each other so that they do not overlap. Huh? And then, or clutter. So, this ensures maximum sunlight is absorbed by the chlorophyll in the granum for photosynthesis. So, here's an overview of the stages of photosynthesis. There are two stages in photosynthesis. The first stage is called the light-dependent reaction, and it occurs in the thylakoids in the chloroplast. Okay, and it needs or requires the presence of light for the reaction to occur. Okay, now the second stage is called the light-independent reaction or the Kelvin cycle. It does not require light for it to, uh, to be carried out, but it does need the substances produced by the light-dependent reaction. Huh? Okay, so let's talk about the light-dependent reaction that requires light. Now, what is needed for the light-dependent reaction? You need sunlight, or just light, and then uh, chlorophyll found in the thylakoids, and water. Huh? LCW is the initials of uh, an athlete, a famous athlete, uh, if, you can, if you know what I mean. Now, so light, okay, shines on the chlorophyll. So the chlorophyll absorbs the light energy, and then it has an excited electron. Uh, the electrons will become excited, okay, and they'll come out from the chlorophyll. So through a process, which we'll discuss later, ATP is produced. Okay, that means the light energy trapped by the chlorophyll is converted into chemical energy stored in ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Okay, now that's the generation of ATP uh, by chlorophyll. And also it will, uh, through the process, through the electrons, uh, okay, by means of the electrons, another molecule produces NADPH. Now where did the H come from? Uh, okay, so the second process that occurs, apart from the electrons, uh, uh, excited electrons. Another process that occurs is the breakdown of water in photolysis of water. So water is broken down into hydrogen and hydroxide, hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. And finally, at the end of the whole process, oxygen is formed, O2. This is a byproduct of photosynthesis that diffuses out of the leaves and can be used for cellular respiration by other organisms or by the plant itself okay so um, from the light dependent reaction two molecules are obtained that go into the that move into the light independent uh, that's used in the light independent reaction and these are ATP and NADPH all right then uh, together with carbon dioxide eh, that is fixed all right that, that means that is uh, trapped by the organic compounds uh, and uh, it's carbon dioxide from the air will no longer be in the air but it will be incorporated it will be, it will be converted into a form okay inside the organic compound in the cell huh? so the carbon dioxide together with the ATP and NADPH will in the end uh, combine together and form the organic compound uh, called glucose okay and when glucose is formed it has used some energy eh, for its formation so the ATP has broken down to form ADP and P all right and the NADPH has uh, given its hydrogen atom to the organic compounds to form glucose so it becomes NADP plus so these three molecules will move back to the thylakoids to be used again in the light dependent reaction all right so take note of the substances needed for light reaction and then it's uh, 
products are oxygen, ATP and NADPH. And then for the light independent reaction, you need ATP and NADPH and carbon dioxide to form glucose in the air. Okay. Now, one more thing to note is that for our bio key to remember some of the facts, right? What are the requirements for photosynthesis to occur? So for the first stage, the light dependent reactions, we need LCW, initials of a famous athlete. Huh? Uh, this is light, L for light, C for chlorophyll, and W is for water. All right, for the light dependent reactions, these are the requirements for the light dependent reactions. And then for the light independent reactions, we need CAN, which is C for carbon dioxide, A for ATP, and N for NADPH. Okay, so together the requirements will be LCW can, it means LCW can do it, uh, can win the match. So uh, this is just to, a suggestion to help you remember some of the facts that we are studying here. Keep the schematic diagram that I have prepared and created to help you understand and also uh, memorize the light dependent reaction and light independent reactions of photosynthesis more easily. Okay, So you can pause the video and copy and draw it first or you can copy it at the end of the the explanation. Later on, I will show this uh, slide again uh, to you. Right, so now let's discuss the story of photosynthesis. How does photosynthesis occur? Step by step, okay? So photosynthesis is divided into two stages. Firstly, is the light-dependent reactions that occur in the thylakoids, in the chloroplast. And secondly, there's the light-independent reactions that occur in the stroma. Okay, so we start with the first stage, huh? the light-dependent reactions that occur in the thylakoid. Alright, so the thylakoid are the disc-shaped structures and on its surface, there are the chlorophyll or, and other photosynthetic, photosynthetic pigments. Okay found here on the surface membrane of the thylakoids. So firstly, when sunlight shines on the leaf, right, it will penetrate through into the chloroplast in the cells, all right? And then the chlorophyll on the surface membrane of the thylakoids will absorb this light energy from the sun. Now, so it has received energy, and this light energy will excite the electrons in chlorophyll to a higher level. Okay, just like somebody who has uh, drunk some coffee or tea, eh, then they, are, they have a lot of energy, you know, then they move around very quickly, talk very fast, and so forth. Eh? So, excited, become excited. So, in this case, chlorophyll, all right? The electrons in chlorophyll will become excited and then they will leave the chlorophyll molecule okay because now the electrons have a higher energy level a much higher energy level than before now next number three the excited electrons from chlorophyll go through a series of electron carriers and the energy from the electrons is used to generate atp or adenosine tri phosphate okay so now these electrons will be passed from one electron carrier to the next now we do not need to know the names of these electron carriers they're actually molecules huh? so the electrons are passed from one electron carrier to the next just like a hot potato is passed from you to your friend and then to the next friend and so forth huh? so but in this case, as the energy, as the electrons are passed through the electron carriers, the energy from the electrons is used to generate ATP. Okay? Because 
the electrons will release some energy as they pass through the electron carriers and that energy is used to produce ATP. How it does it, we don't need to know at this stage. It's for more advanced level uh, of learning. So, but anyway, the ADP, adenosine diphosphate, combines with the phosphate group and forms ATP. Okay, so what happens here is that the light energy has been converted into chemical energy stored in the ATP molecule, adenosine triphosphate molecule. Okay, so the energy is stored in the bonds of ATP now. And this energy is going to be used in the next stage, which is in the light independent reaction. Right? Okay, so now what happens to the electrons? To the electrons, okay? Now, eventually, number four, eventually these electrons are accepted by the last electron acceptor, which is NADP positive. We'll find out more about this name uh, later on, okay? But for the time being, let's call it NADP positive. So the electron is accepted, accepted by NADP positive, which is an electron acceptor. Apart from that, this NADP positive also combines with hydrogen ions. Huh? I'll be at number 5 now. Huh? NADP positive combines with hydrogen ions from photolysis to form NADPH, which is a reducing agent. Okay, So H positive also combines with this NADP plus. All right? So what happens here is that NADP plus or positive will become NADPH because it has combined with the hydrogen. And the electrons will neutralize the uh, positive charges here. Okay? So this is like a neutral molecule, uh, NADPH. Okay? Now, so these two molecules are produced uh, by the excited electrons. Okay? So, they will enter the next stage of photosynthesis, which is the light independent reactions to take part in the uh, formation of glucose. Okay? So, we leave it for the time being. Now, there is another uh, event that occurs, okay, in the light dependent reactions. What is that? Photolysis of water. Okay? Now, we'll, we'll just. Uh, skip number six first because we are going to come back to it later. So let's talk first about photolysis of water. What is the meaning of the word photolysis? Photo means light, lysis means breakdown. It means using light to break down water. Okay, so photolysis is a process whereby water molecules are broken down to form hydrogen ions, H positive, and hydroxide ions, OH negative, in the presence of light energy and chlorophyll. Okay. So to break down the water molecules, energy is needed and it's actually the energy absorbed by chlorophyll that can be used to carry out photolysis of water. All right? So the equation for this reaction is H2O, now ignore the four, H2O by using light energy eh, is broken down or split into H positive and OH negative. Okay, so we can write it here. Photolysis of water, right, produces H positive and OH negative. Okay, so this hydrogen ion, H positive, is used to reduce the NADP positive to NADPH. Okay, and uh, NADPH is called a hydrogen carrier because it's going to carry the hydrogen into the next stage so that it can be used to reduce the organic compounds. Huh? All right, so now let's look at hydroxide ions. Do they have any use? So actually, they are very important huh? because the hydroxide ions, huh? sometimes it's called hydroxyl ions, huh? but here we'll call it hydroxide ions. Huh? Hydroxide ions lose electrons and form oxygen 
O2 and water. So four hydroxide ions, okay, will lose four E's, four electrons, and then the hydroxide groups combine together to form two H2O and O2, which is oxygen gas. Okay, so let's write it here. Hydroxide ions, okay, undergo this reaction and form oxygen which is released into the atmosphere. So what's the importance of this oxygen? Oxygen, O2 from photolysis of water, is a byproduct of photosynthesis. It's released into the atmosphere and it can be used in cellular respiration by organisms to produce energy for their activities. All right? So we know that cellular respiration uses oxygen, okay, uh, where the glucose is broken down. All right, coming back to photosynthesis. Now, we have these electrons here, right? So, the chlorophyll will attract the electrons to itself. Huh? And then it will become stable after that. So, overall, chlorophyll did not lose any electrons. You see, it gave away its electrons to NADPH, but it still received uh, electrons from the hydroxide, hydroxide group of hydroxide ions. Okay? Right. So, that's it for the light-dependent reactions. Uh, and remember, the byproducts, the products are, not the byproducts, uh, the products from the light-dependent reactions are ATP and NADPH, which are very important products that will be used in the like independent reactions stage and one more product is O2 oxygen which is used uh, in cellular respiration okay but not used in photosynthesis now let's talk about the the other stage which is like independent reactions now let's go on to the like independent reactions that occur in the stroma. This is the second stage of photosynthesis. So firstly, there is carbon dioxide fixation, meaning that five carbon organic compounds, that means this compound contains five carbon atoms in its molecule, fix the carbon dioxide gas to form six carbon organic compound okay so it means that the five carbon organic compound reacts with carbon dioxide so that this carbon dioxide is now combined and found in the six carbon organic compound because you've added one carbon from carbon dioxide to the five carbon organic compound and so it becomes six carbon organic compound all right so the word fixation carbon dioxide fixation here what does the word fixation mean now carbon dioxide fixation is the process by which photosynthetic organisms such as plants convert carbon dioxide in the air to form organic compounds in plant cells so that the carbon dioxide is no longer in gaseous form in the air uh, but it's now found in the plant cells in the it is a uh, it is in the in the organic compound. Uh, so it has been incorporated into this organic compound. It's combi combined with some other molecules or atoms in this organic compound. Now next, there is reduction. Okay, so first of all, the 6C organic compound uh, will split to form two, three carbon organic compounds. Okay, uh, now, now this is not stated in the notes, so I just let you know how it happens. Huh? But you can just explain using the notes here. So this three carbon organic compound now undergoes reduction. Okay, because it combines with ATP, all right, and it is reduced by ATP and also NADPH 
we exhibit. Uh, so ATP and NADPH from the light dependent reaction reduce the organic compounds to form glucose monomers and finally glucose. So reduction occurs whereby the hydrogen from NADPH okay, is used to reduce the three carbon organic compound here. So it will form a three carbon sugar. Huh? Now the ATP is to provide the energy for the reaction. All right, so ATP will break down to form ADP and P and release energy for the formation of this 3C, three carbon sugar, right? molecule. Now after that, this molecule is used to synthesize glucose, right? Which is C6H12O6. Okay? So glucose monomers combine in condensation to form starch molecules. So after glucose is formed, they can combine together in condensation okay with the elimination of water molecules molecules huh, to form starch molecules which are more complex and these starch molecules or granules are stored in the stroma of chloroplasts okay so glucose and can also be used to synthesize other compounds such as cellulose amino acids and lipids Right? So when you explain, you just explain as what is in the notes here. All right? For the light independent reactions. Okay? So here again is the same schematic diagram in case you have missed it at the beginning of the explanations. Right? So you can draw this and also in your notes, into your notebook, copy this into your notebook. Or you can even draw a poster of it and paste it on your wall, right, to review again and again and strengthen your memory, right, on this topic of the process of photosynthesis. And here are the notes, all right, together with the same diagram, one of the first, the first diagram on light dependent reactions, all right, in case you need to copy the notes. So this was explained just now, huh? this process of uh, light-dependent reactions in the Tyler Court was explained just now. So here are the notes for photolysis of water. The diagram is the same. Okay, the notes are different. This is for the light-dependent reactions. And finally, the notes for the light independent reactions in the stroma, okay, where we discuss carbon dioxide fixation or carbon fixation and reduction. I think we better stick to carbon dioxide fixation, all right, as is mentioned in the textbook. So if you haven't copied this second part of uh, the stages of photosynthesis, you can do so. Huh? You can pause the video and copy it. Now finally, here's a summary of the process of photosynthesis, right? So photosynthesis is divided into two stages. One, the light-dependent reactions in the thylakoid, and number two, the light-independent reactions in the stroma. So let's start with number one, light-dependent reactions in the thylakoid. For this process, two, three substances are needed. Three things are needed, light, water, and chlorophyll okay so the chlorophyll is found in the surface membrane of the thylakoid in the chloroplast all right now take note that this word photosynthesis has two parts photo means light so it's you can use it to remember that the first stage of photosynthesis are the light dependent reactions that require light to occur to be carried out. Synthesis means to produce something, right? So what is synthesized in the second stage, the light-independent reactions? What is synthesized? 
yes, glucose is synthesized, right? So this word photosynthesis can refer to the can help you to remember the two stages of uh, photosynthesis. Huh? Photo for light dependent reactions and synthesis for the light independent reactions. Okay, let's continue with the, our light dependent reactions. So we need light, water, and chlorophyll, right? So the first event that occurs is production of ATP and NADPH by electrons. Firstly, light excites the electrons of chlorophyll to higher levels of energy. So the excited electrons will go through a few electron carriers and in the process, energy from the electrons is used to produce ATP. Also, NADPH is produced when NADP plus combines with electrons from uh, chlorophyll plus hydrogen ions H plus from photolysis of water. Okay, so these two molecules, ATP and NADPH, will then move into the stroma for the to be used in the light independent reactions. Now, what's the second event that occurs for light dependent reactions? Photolysis of water, right? So, in photolysis of water, the water is broken down into two parts, hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. The hydrogen ions plus electrons and electrons reduce NADP plus into NADPH, as we have mentioned here. Okay, it's the same thing. Then oxygen is released when the <clears throat> hydroxide groups combine together. Okay. So this oxygen is released into the atmosphere and can be used by organisms for respiration to produce energy. Now let's go on to the second stage of photosynthesis, which is the light independent, which are the light independent reactions in the stroma. All right. So there are also two main events that occur. The first one is fixation of carbon dioxide. So organic compounds, uh, five carbon organic compounds, fix the carbon dioxide gas, meaning the carbon dioxide gas is incorporated or it will be converted into, uh, will be put into the organic compounds, all right, in the chloroplast. It will combine with organic compounds in the chloroplast. Now, next event is reduction of organic compounds in order to form glucose. So, for this, the two molecules from the light-dependent reactions will take part, and that is NADPH and ATP. They will reduce the organic compounds. Okay, so NADPH will provide the H, the hydrogen, to reduce the organic compounds. And ATP will pro provide the energy for the reduction of organic compounds to form glucose monomers and from there to form glucose. Then the glucose monomers or glucose can condense. They can combine together. Condense means to combine together with the elimination of water to form more complex molecules such as starch molecules and also other molecules like lipids, amino acids, and even cellulose. Right, that is the process of photosynthesis. Now, just now, for the light-dependent reaction, LDR, we talked about NADP plus and NADPH. So what are they? Now, the full name for NADP plus is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, uh, NADP, okay, and has a positive charge here. So it is actually a coenzyme in cells, meaning that it is required by enzymes in order to carry out catalysis to speed up the rate of chemical reactions, all right? It is not the enzyme, but it's required by enzymes, okay, to sort of help assist uh, 
it in catalytic activities. Now, it's also a hydrogen carrier if it is combined with hydrogen, huh? as we can see here for NADPH, right? And it is an electron carrier. It can receive electrons, right? It is the last electron carrier in the electron carrier uh, system or electron transport system or electron carrier chain. Now, it is an oxidizing agent in photosynthesis. Why do we say it's an oxidizing agent? Because it can receive hydrogen ions and electrons from another uh, molecule, right? So when it receives hydrogen ions and electrons, it is reduced, but it oxidizes the other molecule. Huh? So uh, in the light-dependent reaction, all right, it receives hydrogen ions and electrons to form NADPH. So NADPH has the hydrogen there. It is the reduced state. right? Whereas NADP positive without the hydrogen and uh, lack of one electron here is the oxidized state. Okay, so uh, here we can see what happens uh, for NADP positive to become NADPH. So in this process, it has received hydrogen, okay, one hydrogen uh, atom, all right, and it also received one electron so that its charge is neutralized, okay, and the other electron is to neutralize the hydrogen uh, ion so that it, can, it also combines with the NADP, huh? so it becomes NADPH. And there's extra one hydrogen ion here, huh? it's left out here. Okay, so uh, NADPH huh? is formed in the light-dependent reaction, and it carries the hydrogen huh? into the light-independent reaction, reaction stage, right? So it is a reduce, reducing agent in the light independent reaction because it will give away the H. Uh, so reduction is a process which involves addition of hydrogen or gain of electrons in a substance. Okay? In this case, it will add hydrogen, it will give the hydrogen to some compound, which is the organic compound. Okay? So in that way, it reduces the organic compounds into which carbon dioxide is fixed. So with carbon dioxide and the hydrogen, from water, uh, glucose monomers are formed at the end, and glucose molecules will be formed from the from that. Now, learning standard number six: compare and contrast light-dependent and light-independent reactions in photosynthesis. Okay, so let's make a comparison between the two stages of photosynthesis. This can be asked as an Essay question or structured question. Similarities. Both reactions take place in the chloroplast. All right? And both reactions are catalyzed by enzymes known as photosynthetic enzymes. Okay? So these are the similarities between light-dependent reactions and light-independent reactions. The two stages of photosynthesis. Let's look at the differences. What is the site of the reactions? For light-dependent reactions, they occur in the thylakoids found in the gland uh, or the group of thylakoids in the chloroplast. Light-dependent reactions, however, occur in the liquid part of the chloroplast, which we call the stroma. Not stoma, uh, stroma, with an R. Now, reactants. For the light-dependent reactions, the reactants are water, but actually, you also need chlorophyll and sunlight, although we don't usually call these reactants. Huh? But we need these two uh, components also, or these two uh, requirements too. Okay, chlorophyll and sunlight, and then water. Okay, think of light, L, and then uh, C, uh, W, uh, initials of uh, someone, a uh, famous athlete. Now, light-independent reactions, for this, you need carbon dioxide from the air, and also you need ATP and NADPH, which was produced in the light-dependent reactions, okay, to provide the energy. ATP provides the energy for the reactions in the light-independent reactions, and then NADPH provides the hydrogen, okay, to reduce 
the organic compounds. Products of reaction for light dependent reactions uh, oxygen is produced as a byproduct. Water molecules are also produced when the hydroxide ions combine together. Now, apart from that, the molecules NADPH and ATP are produced, which are both which both are used in the light independent reactions. Okay. Now, for light independent reactions, the products of the reaction are of course glucose, the final product of photosynthesis. Huh? But also produced are these uh, molecules, which actually are produced when NADPH and ATP are used. Okay, so when NADPH is used, it will become NADP positive again, and then when ATP is broken down, it will form ADP and PI in organic phosphate, and these two molecules three molecules will then move back into the chloroplast, into the thylakoids, sorry, into the thylakoids to carry, to be used to form more of these NADP, H and ATP, right? So they are reused again. Huh? Now, ATP molecules, for light dependent reactions, they produce the ATP molecules, right, which are used in the light independent reactions. So light independent reactions use the ATP molecules. Okay? Whereas the light dependent reactions produce the ATP molecules for the light independent reactions to use. Reaction. Light dependent rea reactions involve photolysis of water where water is broken down to form hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. For light independent reactions, the reaction involved is the reduction of carbon dioxide or organic substances to finally form glucose. Now, this one is my own uh, difference. Okay, the rest are from the textbook. Huh? Okay, but the last one here. What is the purpose of the light-dependent reaction? It is to convert light energy into chemical energy stored in ATP and NADPH molecules for use in the light-independent reactions. Whereas the purpose of the light independent reactions is to use that stored chemical energy, ATP, and also to use NADPH, okay, for the reduction of carbon dioxide to form glucose. Okay? Right, so that's all for this lesson. Thanks for viewing. Do share, like, and subscribe. I hope that you have uh, benefited from this lesson. And I believe the schematic diagram will help you a lot. Okay, to understand the process, connect all the various processes together and also to memorize this topic well. So take care and goodbye for now.